Hey guys, what's up? Sarah here, and today I am coming at you with five of the greatest moments in synth pedal history because I feel like that's something that no one's done a video on. Obviously, I don't know that objectively, so take it for what you will. This video is sponsored by Reverb. In case you guys didn't know, Reverb has created something called the Pedal Movie. I want you to tell us from your perspective the history of guitar of that pedals. Ever since musical instruments were first used, they have been an extension of people's power of expression. You have to go back all the way to the beginning. People shredding guitar speakers, turning the tone knob to create sort of a moving filter. It's a sordid tale, but at its core, it's people trying new things. We're literally inventing like what rock and roll became. All the different flavors that we get from guitars has historically evolved through these things called effects pedals. There's certain pieces of music that would not be the same without the effect. The Pedal Movie is a deep dive into the untold story of the pedal industry's massive rise to what it has become today. Now let's dive in. What are the five greatest moments in synth pedal history? Number one, the talk box. The birth of the talk box started way back in the 1930s with Alvino Ray. He was an amateur radio operator who used a carbon throat microphone to modulate his electric steel guitar sound. Shortly thereafter, followed the Sonobox, which was invented by Gilbert Wright in 1939. But this time, instead of a throat microphone modulating a guitar signal, it used small transducers attached to the performer's throat to pick up voice sounds. Pete Drake, a Nashville-based pedal steel guitarist, used a talk box on his 1964 album Forever in what came to be known as his talking steel guitar. His name is Pete Drake. He got the brilliant idea one time to make his steel guitar talk, and he actually does it right now with a beautiful song, Forever. Then we had the bag. <laughs> Check this out. And I think the bag speaks for itself. Then Bob Heil came along and invented the talk box as we know it today, using a JBL 150 watt driver. Joe Walsh went through Nashville and did Rocky Mountain Way using the talking actuator. He was in my home for a Christmas dinner right before the tour of Barnstorm. So that day, we went out to my Heil Sound factory and invented, so to speak, or actually adapted all of those above uh, to a high powered talk box. Next, we have the EMS Synthi Hi-Fly. Designed by David Cockrell in 1971 for EMS, he eventually went on to design many classic electroharmonics effects, such as the microsynth and the small stone phaser. Only 350 EMS Synthi Hi-Flies were ever made, making it an extremely valuable collector's item. Um, I did go online to search what they're going for right now, and it was anywhere from $7,000 to $10,000, which is like... Poosh, David Gilmour bought a prototype in 1972, and even back then it was pricey. So I'm fully convinced that all of the EMS Synthi High Fly owners invested all their money into that instead of a camera because there was not a ton of footage on YouTube. But anyways, here's a cool video of Roger Waters messing around on an EMS Synthi AKS, which is kind of a totally different thing, but it sounds so sweet. <laughs> Third, we have the Roland GR500, something many of you are familiar with, and it's further future iterations. It is a paraphonic guitar synthesizer system that was first introduced in 1977. It laid the foundation for Roland's very successful 24-pin guitar synthesizers like the GR300 and the GR700 that would soon follow. The GR500 has five sections, guitar, poly ensemble, bass, solo melody, and external synth. It even included an infinite sustain system. <laughs> Fourth, the Electroharmonics Micro Synthesizer. Like the EMS Synthi Hi Fly, the Micro Synthesizer was also developed by David Cockrell in 1979. It's an all analog pedal that features a four voice mixer and two pole filter. 
The microsynthesizer creates different timbers by modulating and modifying the input signal through various circuits. It was inspired by the sound of the 1970s analog synths like the Moog Arp, Oberheim, and many others. <laughs> Five, I could not pick an identifiable moment in time because I think we're there. I think right now is the best time for synth pedals. I mean, we have the Empress FX Zoya, which is like a modular synth in a box that you can plug your guitar into. And it's like, it's crazy. We have things like the Source Audio C4 synth pedal. This is also kind of like a modular synth in a box. And I know a lot of you are familiar with the Maris pedals, like the Enzo. There are so many different pedals that this company makes that can give you out of this world sound. I think it's now, I think now is the best time. So let's end on that note. Now let's get into some demos because I've just been talking forever. <laughs> Thanks so much to Reverb for sponsoring this video. I had a blast making it and learning so much about pedals and basically how I ended up doing what I'm doing. I wouldn't have been able to do any of the things I do without these technologies being developed over the last hundred years, so that's crazy. Um, be sure to click the link in the description below, check out everybody else's videos, and I will see you guys around. Thank you. The